Hello and welcome to the 37th tutorial in the Cocos 2D JS version 3 series. In this part we're going to be looking at setting up single touch events. We'll be using the source code from the 7th tutorial. If you don't have it, don't worry, there'll be a link in the description. Cocos 2D JS provides us with all the desired functionality for touch recognition in the form of events. This tutorial will only set up single touch uh, event and the next few tutorials will make use of it so when single touch has began, moved, ended, a little prerequisite, you will require some sort of device or simulator, be it iOS or Android or anything else as touches for devices. But we will cover mouse events as well later in this series, which is to be used for the web as a touch equivalent. So if you aren't interested in developing for a device like an iPhone or an Android device, then we'll, we will say just skip the next few tutorials and just wait till we get to mouse and keyboard events. Okay, so what we're going to do is open up our project, but as I just mentioned, it's for devices and simulators, so for the next few tutorials, we'll be using Xcode, so I can just run it in the simulator, you can obviously do an Android if you want it, but the simulator on Xcode is really, really good. So what we're going to do is go to our app.js, and just below here, uh, I hate the IntelliSense on... Um, you know what? Actually, what I'm gonna do is minimize this because what you can also do is just open up the JavaScript file like in the novel text editor. Uh, Sublime seems to work better than Xcode, and the changes will just propagate through it once you save. So I'm just gonna code in here, but we're running in Xcode. So I'm just gonna do if, and first of all, what we're gonna check is the system's capabilities. Does it have touch capability? Then to do that, you do cc dot sys dot capabilities. Make sure I spell capabilities right. Capabilities that looks a okay. Dot has own property, and in here we're going to put touches. So basically, this just checks if. The, the device or whatever you're using is capable of touch and then we're going to do cc dot event manager not manager manager dot add listener oops it's easy open close bracket and then we're going to do the curly braces and now in here we're going to do cc dot no sorry no event colon cc dot event listener dot touch one by one and this just basically indicates that you're doing single touch if you want to do multi touch this will be touch uh, all at once I believe it is but we're, we're going to cover that uh, after we've done single touch anyway so there's no need for you to worry about that Put a comma here. Well, so we missed. Did a comma here. I need to put this. Did a semicolon. That looks a okay. So I'm just going to quickly go through it just to make sure you source file correctly. CC dot sys capabilities dot has own property touches. That looks a okay. Curly brace CC dot event manager dot add listener event colon CC dot event listener dot Touch one by one, comma, and then we have the co closing curly brace for the event manager, comma, this semicolon, closing curly brace. Yeah, that seems a okay. We now have set up single touch events. In the next tutorial, we will cover detecting when a single touch has begun, aka a real world example would be when the user has touched the screen. At that moment, this uh, event will be called, the one we'll be covering in the next part of the series. If you have any questions, feel free to message us at support at sonarsystems.co.uk. The email will be in the description. You can comment on this video, just directly message us via YouTube. All the recording for source code will also be in the description. And as usual, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.